of many, many, many months, hard work and um, heartache. Uh, I should have done this a long, long time ago, I guess, but we did little bits and pieces and each time you think, well, we haven't really done very much there. And the next thing, um, you're, you're you know, fairly well on the way, so I uh, thought I'd better start and get a bit of tape of this one on, in, in production. Um, First off, I guess we're using standard Corvette frame, uh, no modifications whatsoever except the removal of uh, rear gussets in the corner of the frame, uh, which I'll show when we get this on a ramp. A um, few body mounts have been changed. Um, we're also going to shorten this rear member. That's going to interfere with our hinging deck lid. Um, so that's all we're really going to have to do to the frame. Um, different ride heights, that kind of thing. We've, we've got that all sussed out now. Um, the, the rear, I think, is stock. Uh, ride height, the front has been dropped about an inch, inch half. So um, that, that's giving us the stance we've got. Um, what we want to do is raise the rear slightly uh, to give it a more drop-down look at the front. Um, the floor pan and the body has been something of a trial. Uh, we've used a stock Corvette transmission tunnel uh, which has been extended downwards and then uh, the floor pan built up round it um, and around a stock Corvette handbrake lever. Everything else is going to be modified and everything else will be um, either repro parts or, or um, aftermarket parts. We've dropped the floor pan down uh, to just below the level of the centre cross member um, so that when you're sat in this your head isn't above the height of the rear deck and the height of the sponson. Um, does make the driver look a bit daft, so that's the reason for that. We're now uh, getting to the stage where we're going to make the rear end clam open. Uh, we've already made the front do that, um, fairly simply in, in fairness, but uh, it's taken a lot of thought to get to it. Um, the next stage now, we're about to cut the grill opening. We've already cut and done the holes for the vents at the front, for the grills rather. And uh, I'll just show you how this opens now. And that's the structure we've built inside. Uh, it's only partially done. There's, there's going to be inner fenders going there as yet, um, along with headlight supports, this, that and the other, and we're still, we're still deciding on what headlight treatment to give it. Um, we've used the stock uh, so 75, 76, a crash bar from the front. We've, we've ground the brackets off and um, modified that slightly, made our own brackets for the hinges, uh, which we've used... Um, sway bar, polyurethane sway bar bushes and made our own brackets up to go in there. Um, rack and pinion steroids, smart struts are on this car also. Uh, all the, the nice suspension hop ups that you can get to fit to them. Um, we've got an engine factory, uh, 400 or so horsepower Mosa uh, linked to a rebuilt TH350 transmission. Uh, everything else once again is pretty stock. Um, we're planning to use uh, a stock Corvette booster and mass cylinder uh, with a, a, a manufactured brake pedal box. Um, and I think the stock Corvette um, accelerator pedal. I've got a, a short steering column from I Did It coming, um, which will link through there into the steroids UJs. And we're going to reposition that slightly to give it a nicer run into the car. be honest with you, when I sit and, or, or stand here and say about all the things we've done, all the things we're going to do, um, I'm quite impressed to be honest. We've, we've taken something, uh, when, you know, I'll, I'll, I've got photographs and um, when this arrived it was quite shocking. Um, we've made something which is going to be, I think, stunning um, and breathtaking performance. I think it's just going to knock them down everywhere you go. We'll, we'll put the rear end on now and show you this in its entirety. Right, what we've got here is the, this is the rear clip, uh, the internal rear clip of a 1980 Corvette that we've cut down and we've extended the sides upwards. This is, this is going to form the buck uh, for our mould. Um, this is to give the car a bit of luggage space in the rear. Um, also, just to cover up the diff and drive shafts, uh, to give us an inner wheel arch as well at the rear end. Um, that, that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm pleased with that. That's going to make this a, a bit more usable now, having some storage space. Uh, the fuel tank is going to go in the rear here, 
once we've shortened the frame, we're going to measure up for that, and I think we're going to use a 1932 Ford fuel tank. Um, that seems to be the one that follows the shape of the rear deck the nicest, uh, which we've got here. This is our, our rear clam, uh, mounted upside down or laid upside down at the moment. We've just been cutting the holes for rear lights, uh, you know, three either side, then the uh, license plate light. Um, again, stock Corvette ones, uh, slightly modified housings, but you know, going there looking good. We'll just put that on. Well, there you go, that's everything built up now. Doors, rear, rear deck, front end. Quite a thing. Hold on one second. Saved by the bell, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that's it. Rear deck is on. Looking very, very good, very mean. Yeah, it's going to be quite something. Looks great. Yeah, can't wait to see it finished. Just trying to source the rest of the parts for it, and um, yeah, I really, really can't wait to see it finished. We'll do more as things progress.